I think nature and land teach us that we're a part of something bigger than just our story or our life that we're living. My name is Brad Ott. I'm Aaron Ivey. And we are the owners at Green Acres. So we didn't actually choose the name Green Acres. Um, when we purchased this property uh, from some friends of ours that were living here, they named it Green Acres. Um, and so when we bought the property, it already had this, uh, this kind of like brand ethos and uh, it already had a functioning business. And if, if I'm being totally candid, we didn't, it wasn't like our favorite choice, but it, it, it was actually really like warm and homey. Yeah. And now that we've been here, it actually really fits for this place. It's stuck now. Yeah. yeah. I had been coming out to Green Acres uh, because of the connection with our friends that used to own it. And I just loved it. I loved coming out here. I came out here for a live music show and just really enjoyed the element of hospitality and art being infused into the land that was out here. And we have like these like two different paths that ended up at the same place. He came out here for the show. I came out here with a bunch of buddies. We all stayed and just cooked out and spent time together as we celebrated this guy becoming a father and uh, and how perfectly appropriate that these two different things of like life, community and art kind of converging and they were happening before us and so we get to be kind of the caretakers for for what this place turns into. That's right. And our families have been friends for a really long time too. I mean, we, we aren't just co-owners of this place, but we're best friends. And so we already care about hospitality and hosting people. That's why this place is so special to us. The previous owners of the Dickersons, Brandon and Kirsten Dickerson, and uh, they reached out to us, uh, originally to Aaron and Jamie in uh, December of 2016 and uh, was like, hey, we're looking to move to Fredericksburg. We want to sell the property. And one of the things that they were really eager to talk about was selling this to friends that could help carry the vision of hospitality, hosting people, providing a place for rest and respite, which is what we both are incredibly passionate about. And so it's kind of got this cool history of we loved this place even before it was our own. And immediately I was like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like this is something that we've, We've loosely talked about it with them, and nothing concrete. And well, we, we've talked about owning something like this for a while, but we didn't know what season of life it would happen in, and it just went together quickly. And three months later, we were, we own the property. So when the previous owners had it, they lived here. Um, so it was a business for them, but it was I would call it more of a side hustle. When it came to us doing this, we had a general idea of kind of how we wanted to see this. Really, our number one mission behind this is that we kind of reclaim um, what hospitality actually looks like, real hospitality. I think true hospitality is basically it's servanthood. Servanthood is providing a place for people to engage and to connect uh, with themselves, with others, with the outdoors. Um, in respite and just being that place that provides that and it's not about us getting attention but it's about us fostering an environment. Different than a hotel or a resort it actually being in nature I mean no, no, no matter where you go or what you look at here you're surrounded by beautiful nature in East Austin. One of the things we were super cautious about going into this is because we're such good friends and our families are tied together um, you know, in such a great way is like entering into this with clear expectations. So from the, the, the relational uh, hurdles, we haven't really had any. The day to days, I mean, there's plenty of those. Do you choose to get offended when somebody gives you a bad review um, or texts you at one in the morning saying that they hear dogs barking in the wilderness? Sometimes you get rain for two and a half weeks and you can't dig a trench to run a septic line. And that's just the way it is. And so those hurdles in business and getting a month behind your project um, you can't like work your way out of that or wish your way out of it or so just being accepting of those and learning how to have a more strategic time approach um, has been I would say for me that's that's been a big challenge but it's been a really good challenge technically speaking in purchasing the property you know this is a really unique space and the fact that it's like hospitality and it's also land acquisition which is more real estate in terms of like from like a growth and an, uh, an investment point of view 
um, it definitely presents challenges uh, because if we want to grow, um, that's really challenging because you have a certain type of investor or a bank that wants to give money for this and then somebody who wants to give money for this. And so it makes a really complicated scenario and you have to think really creatively. I think a big lesson that we're both learning, both of us um, are future thinkers, we're both big dreamers. And so we're thinking about this big scope for what we want this place to be. But in reality, that's gonna take several years, a decade to get there. And just being patient with what we have right now. And also um, not assuming that when it grows to a certain place, then it'll finally be something that we're proud of. But mm. making sure we're proud of it right now today with the things that we have on this property, with the people that are present here, being super proud and being able to say like, we're doing everything we can right now in this season with this piece of land. Right now, the dream is happening. We actually had talked about, like, maybe we own something one day, and that's actually happening. Mm -hmm. um, and that in and of itself is special. Um, whether this goes on for 30 years or if it goes on for six more months or whatever, like, the, it's actually happening, and it's been a really healthy thing. We got to host a wedding out here in December. Um, it was first first wedding and only wedding we've hosted uh, to date. Um, I actually, my wife and I actually got to perform the ceremony. The energy was palpable. It was so special in every regard. And that, I think, was the first time that I truly recognized like how meaningful this place was for their memory, that we got to foster a place yeah. that was a new beginning in their life. That's really what this thing is about. We feel really grateful that this specific dream did come true. And we also realize that this land is not ours. We're trying to be stewards of this place, to be good caretakers of this land so that others can experience it. Um, and the fact that it was a dream that came true, I think produces this gratitude and this want to steward it well for other people. So of all of our accommodations that people come to, I'd say people gravitate towards um, our yurts and our cabin the most. Um, and they do that because I think it allows them to feel more connected with the land. Um, and it's not a separated space, um, but it's still, they can, they can feel the wind beneath their feet from the decks and they can hear an owl outside um, or a coyote off in the wilderness. Um, and so it, it connects them to that land space. The thing about, I think, human nature is to just plow through work and just kind of do that and forget that we all need a break. We all need space. We all need to enjoy what's right here around us. I mean, like the average attention span of an American is less than eight seconds. So every eight seconds you're thinking about something totally different until you get into a space that almost forces you just to sit and be still and enjoy the people that are around you and the space that you're in. I mean, I have a goal that people would come out here and develop some sort of contemplative practice. Mm. They can be in nature, um, they can bring their kids out here, they can come out here with a loved one, they can come out here by themselves, and then maybe it's just like starting a campfire or cooking over a grill or going for a walk or going to a state park and hiking or feeding an animal. All of those things are like really yeah. beautiful contemplative practices that sit into this uh, place within all of us of just like rest, slow down. You don't have to have the next word. You don't have to have the next picture. You don't have to have uh, the next experience. Being out here is the experience. And there's something beautiful in that simplicity. When you're in nature, when you're on a piece of land, you're, you're literally around things that existed before you did. You know, if you're looking at a hundred year old oak tree, it just kind of brings like a sobriety to your life. All of these things here need us in no particular way. Like that tree is going to grow and continue growing and then die irregardless of me. And there is something beautiful and humbling about the fact that you get to be a part of this. You don't control it, it doesn't control you, you get to be a part of it. And it's like this symbiotic relationship, which yeah. I think is just so beautiful and humbling. I crave coming here to Green Acres because I need that nothingness to remind me of what, what things in my life really count and really matter. And it's not, 
It's not like my to-do list. It's not my calendar. It's not most of the things that I just kind of fill up my schedule with. It's people, it's relationships, it's family, it's conversations, it's all those things. I think nature and beauty teach us that. I would say like for people that are looking to do this as a business, exploring a dream or exploring a business, any of those things, you there is a certain amount of respect that comes with doing your due diligence. But there's also just something really great about jumping into something. You can't figure out every detail in life. There's a lot of yeah. things are out of your control. And you have to just go into something and work really hard and understand that it's okay for things to like not work out. Like there's actually beauty in that. There's tremendous blessing and value in owning a piece of land and then sharing that with people. Think about what kind of legacy you leave, even for your own family members, your own kids, grandkids, whatever, um, to be able to share that piece of property with them, for them to grow up going to it and, and the memories enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. So in many ways, us being able to acquire this land, it's given us the opportunity to not just pursue this dream, because it's given us the time and the space to do it from a practical point of view um, that we wouldn't have had elsewhere. Um, we, we couldn't have done this business in Austin. We couldn't have bought you know, six houses uh, on the east side and done this same thing. Having yeah. land and having this space prov actually provides the opportunity because you have this space where it can expand out and grow. And um, There's something really, really cool about the growth of an area and how land actually affects that.